This is a solution to the last problem in the um, homework for section 8.3. <clears throat> um, and there are uh, two sort of um, odd things about this particular problem. One is that they're not asking us to do a confidence interval problem all the way through. So the, the five steps for the confidence interval problem that we were talking about uh, kind of goes out the window here. Um, this is really just focusing in on, on steps two and three of that process that we laid out. Um, and so it can be a little disorienting to be thrown into the middle of the process like this. So they're not giving us any information from which we can get a point estimate for anything, and they're not asking us to write a final answer that's a confidence interval. They're just asking us what's going on in steps two and three of our process. Um, the other thing that's significant here is um, is uh, something that I think I said in the context of, of one of the videos where we had the uh, T tables, um, and that is... When the sample size is large, um, and large here would be bigger than the, the t-table shows, so if you look back at those t-tables, you'll see they only go up to um, a degree of freedom of 100. So when the n is bigger than that, um, for sure, the, um, the x-bar distribution that we've been, um, that we use for uh, for creating these confidence intervals uh, is normal. And by that I mean it's so close to being just a regular normal distribution that um, we no longer worry about that, uh, that weird difference between the T distribution and the Z distribution. So the, the important thing from that is that when we have a large N, then we resort to using uh, for confidence intervals, we resort to using the magic Z numbers. From before, and so that means that um, in these problems where we're finding a 95% confidence interval, um, we're going to use a magic Z score of 1.96 for the 95% confidence interval the same way we were doing when we were building confidence intervals for proportions. So the takeaway here is that when the sample size is large, um, that the, there's no difference between using t-scores and z-scores. Um, and so we can just resort back to the, to the magic z-scores we were using before. Um, so those are the two things that are, that are odd about this question. Um, to actually do the question, we just complete steps two and, uh, two and three of our confidence interval process. So uh, for part one here, um, our two steps would be calculate the standard error. Uh, standard error is uh, approximately the sample standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. And so in this problem, the standard deviation is 100. And the uh, sample size for the first part is 324. And that's uh, 5.5555555. Um, I think this one wants us to round to two decimal places, so I'm just going to do... I'm not positive, but I, that's what I think. So I'll go ahead and just say that's to two decimal places. Um, in fact, since that's not my final answer, um, let me point out something about the way we round numbers. Um, if I want my final answer to be okay to two decimal places, then probably I want to try to do all the steps where each step is out to three decimal places, and that'll be, I'll be more uh, certain about my final answer to two decimal places. The second step um, is the margin of error. And um, like I said, we're gonna use 1.96 as the magic z-score that goes with 95% confidence and multiply that by the standard error. So margin of error is 1.96 times standard error. And for that, I get, um, again, assuming I want two decimal places, 10.89. Um, in part two, um, I'm going to do the same two steps. The standard deviation is still 100, but now my sample size in the second step is 1521. So again, to three decimal. I have uh, 
And so margin of error is about, uh, well, it's 1.96 times that. And that is about 5.03 to two decimal places. So what's happened is the only difference in these two problems was the sample size. Um, the margin of error for the first sample sample size was 10.89, and for the second sample size was 5.03. So notice that the um, the margin of error got a lot smaller when the sample size got a lot bigger. That's really the takeaway. And so that's the third part of this question. The effective sample size is that as the sample size gets larger, the margin of error should get smaller. So we can pull this down, see if I've gotten everything right here. Oh, it says my, why does it say that's 10.93? Well, I'll try that out. Um, that really should be, um, that should be correct. I'm not sure why it's using 10.93. It's probably using some software that's um, getting a different rounding, but it should have enough uh, tolerance that it should accept that as the answer. Um, anyway, the third problem here, um, you can see the right answer. The larger sample size, um, the larger the sample size, the smaller the margin of error. That's what we're observing here. All right, well, before I post this, I will double check that, um, that it, it finds my answer to this question acceptable. Um, they are slightly different, but um, it could be that they're just using a computer uh, which would have more decimal places of this z-score than mine does. It might, might be why it's, it's rounded off differently. I'll check it out. Otherwise, I'll post this, and um, if you just do it the way I did, it should be right.